Welcome. In the last video, we have seen how we can identify the parameters of a car model. And we have seen that noise on the output of the measurements could have a significant negative impact on the accuracy of the identified parameters. So therefore, in this lecture series or little lecture series, we are going to investigate the impact on noise on different properties of the ordinary least squares, OLS, estimator. And for this, we will work with the identification setup, which we have already seen so far. And the only important new point is here that we will consider noise again on the output only of our measured system. And we call this noise, this additive noise term nu, which is also shown here in a somehow sloppy notation that we say, okay, our outputs of the system, which we can uh, observe in order to calculate the loss function is basically a linear relation, a linear combination of our true output and the additive noise term. That also means, of course, that our output equation becomes a little bit different. So that means y of k comes now, is now edited with nu of k, and that is z of k times w of k, whereas w of k is a um, column vector and z of k is a row vector from the regressor matrix, right? So our equation becomes here a little bit different. Um, the noise normally comes from sensor noise, for example, uh, or from unaccurate observations of the output, and therefore we will consider this noise process here as a random noise process. And therefore we are interested into some stochastic properties of the OLS parameter estimator considering this random noise which is applied here at the output. And initially I'm interested into the OLS um, solution in terms of the expectation, so that E is the expectation of W hat, so of the estimated parameter vector, when we consider this additive noise. And the expectation of W hat is then the expectation of our normal OLS solution, which is Z transpose times Z, inverted times z transpose times y, so our output vector, plus nu, our measurement noise. Here we have a little bit sloppy notation again, but I think you get the point. Uh, nu here at that point is just the scalar realization of the noise. And here, this nu is basically a, a vectorial realization with up to the n measurement impacts which we have. So here it's a scalar notation and here it's a vectorial notation, okay? Um, if we have a look at this uh, equation so far, then we can basically identify that uh, this part here, um, this expectation of uh, this part is basically just the standard um, solution of the OLS which we had previously. So the expectation over the standard solution which we had previously is basically just our W. Uh, and what remains is then the expectation of Z transpose times Z inverted times Z transpose times mu, right? So this is our ideal solution which we get from the first part and due to this additive noise there might be a potential offset in expectation due to the noise term. Okay, let's study the impact of the noise more closely and for that we will uh, apply certain assumptions. The next assumption which we apply to investigate this more closely is that we are going to assume as a second assumption that that, so the regressors, 
and the noise are uncorrelated, of course, if we do so, then we can basically apply this expectation operator only to the noise, because we assume that uh, Z actually is a deterministic quantity. It doesn't depend on this output noise. It is uncorrelated. So the expectation of all these Zs is without any impact because these are deterministic quantities. And therefore, the expectation is just applied to the noise term back here. So therefore, with this assumption, the expectation of W hat becomes W plus Z transpose times Z inverse times Z transpose times the expectation of nu. Okay, um, expectation of nu. Then the question is, do we have any bias in terms of the noise? And the standard assumption in the ordinary least squares literature, the third and last assumption of this video is actually no. We assume that this noise is bias free, so expectation of nu is zero, so that the sensors which we read do not introduce any bias, but just a random noise which is mean free, which is bias free. And based on this assumption, it follows that the expectation of w hat is actually w, and that means that the OLS estimator is bias-free. Of course, if the assumptions A1 to A3 apply, right? In this scenario, we can prove that the ordinary least squares estimator is bias-free, and we didn't sort this theoretical result, which we have here in the light board, uh, in the previous computational example with the Julia code, because in the Julia implementation, we just had a limited number of uh, data, which we had utilized to calculate the ordinary least square solution, while this investigation, of course, is a theoretical investigation based on random variables, which in simplified word assumes that we are able to process an infinite amount of high quality data. However, this motivates further investigations of other interesting properties of uh, the ordinary least squares estimator, especially when it comes to the situation that we do not have infinitely uh, many high uh, quality data points in order to ensure that this bias free property can be really brought to the real world. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.